So in today's video I'm going to review what's in this box. If you can read the label, you know what it is already. So it's the Peak Electronic Design Atlas SCR100. So it's basically a Triac and SCR tester. So you can verify they work. They are devices which you can't normally test that easily. Like You can't use a multimeter to test them, apart from a dead short maybe. You can't really get much information from them. So you need something like this to do that particular task. I've actually been doing some repairs on some equipment and I've had triacs that have been suspect. I haven't actually known if they've been bad or not because I have nothing to test them with. So I got hold of Jeremy at Peak and said, I suppose you want to send me a SCR tester, do you? He went, yeah, sure. So this is free for the purpose of review. So make sure you go and check out the links down below to support Peak because they're supporting me. So let's get the thing out of the box. So it's always nicely packaged. All the meters are packaged as well. Well, very nice. Here it is. Now, I did actually show this a mailbag briefly before, so I've already kind of featured it, but we'll do a proper review. So these take a AAA battery, made in England by Peak Electronics. So Peak Electronics is actually a small company in the UK, and they make everything, right? So they do the design and manufacture and stuff. It's all done in the UK, and that's something they really want to stress is that it's a small company with a handful of employees, and buying things from them really does help them out. So if you are interested in any of these Peak Electronic Design Testers, then make sure you go and check those links out, because I do lots of different ones, the LCR testers, ESR meters, uh, transistor testers, all sorts of stuff, so check the links out there below, you go to there and have a look. So Thyristor, also known as a SCR, Steel Controlled Rectifier. So here's the manual for it, really quick look through, it's a bit of a guide. Now a Triac is basically an AC device and it has like a four quadrant usage. I'm not really going to go into four quadrants of Triac, stuff like that. But basically it means the current can go in any direction, <laughs> if you think of it that way. This will test in two of those four quadrants. So it mentions it over here somewhere. So if you want to learn about quadrants, there's the information just there about it. So this manual is also available to download off the Peak Electronic Design website. So if you go follow the link down below in the description, you can actually download a manual and read about this and actually educate yourself a bit more about these too. You can actually learn about Triax a little bit and a bit more information about them, how they work. We will do a tear down on this as well, but for now, let's just power this thing up. I've got some brand new Triax over here. So we've got a BTA 26800BW and I've got a BTA 24600BW. I've used these in a previous repair and this in a recent repair which I haven't done a video on yet we can look at a brand new one. And also over here is a suspect one, which I've pulled out of the device, same as this device here. We'll do a comparison to see if this is actually blown or not. Right, let's just hook this up to a triac and actually see. Now the actual connections don't matter, it automatically figures it out as it goes. You can just hook it up, turn it on. Try detected, there we go. So scroll through. So it tells you which lead is which, so it tells you what the pinout is of the device if you don't actually know what that is. You have a gate MT1, MT2, so or terminal 1, terminal 2, depending on the terminology that's being used. The gate and MT1 are actually the ones which do the control. That's through the quadrant usage and stuff like that, so anyway, we won't go into that. So it says between 10 milliamps and 25 milliamps, so it got to 10 milliamps and it hadn't triggered yet. But when it got to 25 milliamps, it had triggered, so somewhere between that range there, the triac had triggered. And then it shows the maximum current and the voltage that was acquired at the maximum current with that range. Okay, so 25 milliamps at 0.84 volts, and it also has a loading automatically of 100 milliamps. That's always there, that's just there for information, it doesn't change. That's just there to tell you what the loading across the triac actually was when it did the test. That's just to remind you that's what it did. And that can be relevant in some cases for the curves on the triac switching stuff like that. But anyway, that's that. And back to the beginning again. So we've got this trike here, we're getting on. But now I've got this tester, I can actually confidently check triacs and be sure whether or not they're right or not, instead of just guessing and replacing the thing blindly. So it's always a benefit. So let's do another test. Found it. Again, it's done the pinouts. This guy, Stanley, I've got the same pinout on here. Uh, trigger count, the same range. That's 0.88 volts at 25 milliamps again. 
very similar to the other device and again this just tells you about the test count the actual loadings put onto it to test it so let's do the same test on the device I'd pulled out which is covered in silicon grease which is always nice I should have given it a wipe off to a test found it scroll down different pinout because I just happened to put the leads differently it is the same pinout it's got the same information about the, the test current and this is 0.9 volts so it's giving slightly higher if I do another test it might come out again differently you never know there you go 0.88 come out the same so yes it's identical to the other one I tested so this trike which I removed is probably fine and in fact I'm pretty sure this trike is fine because when I replaced it it didn't fix the fault <laughs> so I'm confident this trike is good so I'm going to give it a clean get all the grease off it and put it in the box of parts nothing wrong with it and there are the technical specs there for the read so there's a bit of information there about the actual tests it does and thresholds and how it actually does it. Actually it does pulses very quickly so it would put a load on to try and switch the gate with different currents for very short periods of time so if you've got a particularly sensitive device it shouldn't damage it. So as I mentioned before a triac is basically an AC device it works in both directions for current flow. You've got ACRs or thyristors what you want to call them and they are a bit different it's only one directional so not quite the same it works on like basically a half wave principle this can test those as well. I don't have any SCRs here to test, so otherwise I'd hook one up to it, but I don't actually have one here. I don't, well, not that I know of anyway. I mean, if you get these things, read the manual on these. These are always really interesting. They're quite educational, these ones. Peak is really good at putting information in the manual which makes you understand exactly how it works, which is great. Well written. So let's pull this thing apart. Should be pretty easy. It's only got three screws. So plastic screws, but you don't really have to pull this thing apart very often, you know, once a year or so maybe. The recommendation for PIG is actually replace the battery every year in case you have a battery which ends up leaking. Um, so you can catch it before it leaks. But to be honest, I've got meters here. I've got like a DCA 55. I've had that, the same battery in it for like four years. <laughs> it hasn't leaked yet. Um, but yeah, I'd definitely recommend checking them. Especially when you see that these come with a drawer cell. Now, remember this OEM drawer cell is different to the ones you normally buy from shops. As in it's a better quality. I don't know, but drawer cells, at least in my country, they're terrible for leaking. But in the peak testers, which I've got, which have got this battery in, they haven't leaked. So I don't know if it's a quality difference between OEM version versus the one you buy from a supermarket. It probably is. Anyway, there's a nice close look. You can probably read all the part numbers and everything. So it's got a pick. There's a controller for it. Got some devices over here. Is that 9424E, is it? Looks like it. A few of them. Well, it's four of those. A few capacitors. Nutters. Nothing else. Can't quite read the number on that. Maybe you can see it on camera. I don't know. Can you see that? I can't. Is that K170? Or maybe I don't know. Anyway, so that's what that side of the board looks like. Let's take the board out because it does just drop out. Got the buttons, I have to put those back in. And here's the other side. Very simplified, high quality. These are really good quality devices. That's why I like the Peak Electronic stuff because they are good quality. I love Electronic YouTube has got these kind of devices on their benches because they are good quality and very effective. Okay, yes, they're not cheap. You get what you pay for though. So this particular board here has got R4, so I'm guessing this means this is revision 4. I think it's 4.0, not 4.8, I can't quite read that. But So whenever you put these screws back in, I'm always going to talk about this every time I do one. Turn it backwards. Turn it clicks, and then go in. That way, you're not cutting a new thread, you're putting it back in the thread that's already there. Because otherwise you end up chewing out the plastic, because each time you put the screw in, it'll make a new thread. Backwards to the clicks, and then in. Okay, that's how you help preserve these so they don't just get destroyed, you know, in a matter of a few years. A little bit of care like that, make all the difference between it lasting 20 years and lasting 5. Anyway, yeah, just be careful with them. So don't forget to check out the links down below to go to Peak. Don't forget to click like and subscribe if it's your first time here. And if you like the video, click like differently. And thank you very much Peak for seeing this to me at no cost. Catch you later. Bye.